Well, the only health tags you see are, well, well, if you look in the channel, you can see the health tags. They're basically, actually, I kind of wonder why they are even there in this manner. Like hashtag general, hashtag staff, hashtag pictures. Eh, possible. I think I... <sighs> okay, just having a bad day with this today. I forgot to change this to any full screen. Okay. Hello, anyone who may be watching now or later. Helene here along with... Drakir! 
And yeah, I'd forgotten once again to change the freaking stream name. Oh well. Uh, yeah, welcome back to Hard Space Shipbreaker. Uh, yeah, let's just get into it. Yep. So I have a small confession. Mm -hmm. did, did you see that little guy in the picture there in the minion corner? Uh, wait, at the start there? Yep. Yeah, what about? Hello, Shipbreaker. Overnight genetic backup complete. Pattern deviation nominal. Shut Have up, computer. Time. Let me speak. Right, I was saying, somehow I mistook him for you. Okay, I'll assume that's flattery. I think it's more like uh, he just had to the special expression I expect you to have that moment when you're annoyed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I just got caught up in something and had to rush things a bit. Uh, yeah, once again, saying that I should probably change the freaking title before or uh, far ahead. And... Yeah. Okay, there was a sound there for a moment. Uh, remind me about that. Yeah, I, I have a start. I have a yeah. Wait, just battery on this thing is almost out. I have a alert on my uh, fitness tracker. To keep, uh, well, to alert me ahead of time, but yeah, sometimes things just get drawn out a bit, or I just stay in something too long. Oh right, yeah, let's just see what we have here. Um, there's one little change from last times with these, and that is, uh, well, to, uh, I've added, I've, I've tested out stream elements a bit, or rather, I took a look at what they have to offer, and one of the things that comes with that is. Yeah, a required bot that goes into the chat. I suppose I believe you can just get rid of it somehow, but for now I'll leave it be. But I'll probably still stick with OBS, especially after well, what uh, Streamlabs has been up to. I I might have said it er wrong earlier. Stream elements, not Streamlabs. Streamlabs is in hot water because they were a bunch of dicks. Yeah, something about stealing ideas. Now uh, they. Be not sort of more like uh, just a breach of con a big breach of conduct that has people really annoyed with them and let's oops. because they basically took OBS's code changed some things to it and then tried to copyright it and yeah people were not oh. happy about that the stream elements I took a look at because of uh, yeah because of possibly if Streamlabs gets in too much trouble. I'll probably have to drop the li the things of that that I do use the alerts for chat and uh, <clears throat> yeah, things like uh, follow uh, people following and, and such. Uh, yeah, I currently have those of Streamlabs active on the stream because those works are our URLs. And let's actually not go for a javelin this time because that would be the third in a row. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I, I was looking at stream elements to replace that, but that came with having to invite that bot to uh, the stream. Uh, it's not. I haven't. I don't think it is. Oh. Hey Rook, you ever think about starting your own business out there? You know, be your own boss. I swear, one day I'll get a decent salt runner and make my own money. Maybe bring my old man along to help sniff out the good rocks. My dream is to tinker with ship designs. Maybe build some machinery to help with heavy-duty mining? You know, make it safer? If we ever both get out of here, I'd hire you in a heartbeat. If you don't end up coming with me, I hope you get to make your own way out there someday. Definitely Ooh. ping me if you do. Blue out. And yeah, I did say not to go with, <laughs> not to pick a javelin, but it, then I still pick one. But at least it's not one of the big ones with the ring on front. So I'm a bit tired of those. And, yeah, let's cut yeah, through yeah, there. I think you know, the light javelins. I think you got, yeah, I think this is the heavy javelin you're sure to now. It, it, yeah, it says there right there. Javelin heavy cargo. Yeah. Uh, at least it's what, not one of the uh, fueling tanks. And... We we have something in here that we can use for our own little ship. 
But we'll have to destroy the nacelle to get it, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah. Up. That'll be for making our own little ship, which I'm guessing is the current way to get to the quote-unquote end of the game. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. we'll have to have a few uh, accidents, though we can't actually cut through these. So how are we supposed to get that part out? Uh, let's see. Helium, helium, helium. It's obvious. It's a good old engineer's kick. Hmm. I'm going to take a guess that we'd probably have to get use demo charges to break it, because that is the only thing at the moment that can cut nanocarbon. And... I'm not cutting these two here yet because we still have to decompress the in the internals here. So let's do that. Let's not have the cutter equipped just in case. Okay, Hardy again. Wires. Oh, oh, shoot. Look. Looks like you got a part for the armadillo. See if there's any more lying around in there. Okay, so that's one of the reasons all those bits are floating around. Uh, so if I seem a bit closer to the camera at the moment, that's because I'm using a pillow against my back. <clears throat> Just to see how that'll work with uh, streaming. Now, let's see. Actually, oh, thank you. Hmm. We need to get rid of the atmosphere. Ah, there it is. If that's a big blinking... If it has a big light on it, it is generally... Well, if I'm of importance. Yeah, just don't press a big uh, red button. Yep, okay. Pull this one again, because the outside... Yeah, the, <clears throat> the outer... Yeah, the, it's already depressurized in there. This, this should lead to the cockpits, which is also depressurized now. And hello, oh. a new one. Moon brew. Okay. Now that one, yep, that one is decompressurized, and then my heat sink. Okay, we're finding a, quite a few bits here, right? But I'm assuming that the further we get along with fixing that little ship, the more stuff we'll need. And the more likely it is that we'll need to break something to get it. Okay. I would not be surprised. Now up and out and to the other half. Which has... Okay, some sort of crane attached to it. Uh, where is your... There is your airlock. And you have a secondary to the crane as well. Oh dear. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. okay, luckily enough, this is also already decompressed. And hello there. Okay, we'll get to translate that later. Alright, since he, he didn't have been a bit as if he's been here a bit of a rock star. I myself have been having um, a nice day, but we full of surprises. Yeah, how so? Well, I got to learn about Devil Dinosaur. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm still surprised that I never knew Marvel had a dinosaur superhero. I'm not really sure if he counts as a full character and more as some sort of pet <laughs> to other characters. But then again, I don't know too much about that character, except for what I've seen in Marvel Future Fights, which uh, is a mobile game of theirs. I spent some time in that, but eventually I just grew bored of the grind. Because they really just tried to push you to buy, uh, to spend in that. Uh, to the point yeah, that it's practically required. And if yeah, that's it's practically mobile. required, <laughs> that's the time moment to piss off. Is there a part of surprises? All right, good to learn. Camp Cretaceous will be released uh, on Netflix fourth season on 3rd December, which made me yeah. very happy. Then and what, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you go on, yeah. Uh, and uh, what else? Oh, I really got to learn that's a new Harry Potter movie come out next year. I'd heard something about the possible a film version of The Cursed Child. It is that one. Okay. I also I... heard something of a TV special or something of the cast oh, yeah. talking about their experiences with recording the movies and such. And we're not super surprised. And I hear someone joining us. Hello. Also okay. Boo. Also my... Also my... Also fuck this fleshy body of mine. Hello, Rom. Oh, Hello. You're right. If you want context, look at the gay channel about on health and fitness. I think that that that's me enough. Uh, yeah, Rom. Uh, not really sure if we told that, but we know Rom from a, a server on Discord called Gate at the moment. I forget actually what it's supposed to stand for. It was recently changed to that. It was before. It was a well, mostly a fan site for Radio Dead Air, and that cut some of the glass, I think. Oh well, as long as it still, as long as the Ye- cut doesn't Ooh. connect to anything else, I will be safe. <laughs> But yeah, for these streams, we use our own little server. Uh, yeah, maybe someday people who, act, for some reason, enjoy seeing me stumble around in games <laughs> will uh, yeah, congregate to or something. Let's see. Oh, help. Oh, we don't need to break it. We just need to... We can just extract it. Okay, gimme. Or... Aww. Oh, hey, he didn't really like Oops. boxes. <laughs> you broke it. <laughs> I thought... I thought it's still... <laughs> uh, yeah, you broke it! Wait, we, broke can, it. We, can still, we can still somehow extract it, even... Okay, that's just someone else's problem now in the atmosphere. Okay, what did it... I'm guessing we didn't actually extract wires from it or something. Because maybe we have no need for them at the moment, or... Okay, there we broke it. Oh, well. So, then and there. So, yeah, extracting something will break it, but apparently it doesn't always succeed or something. Just to be sure that that's going in. Yeah, why did it break? Yeah, because we're removing a crucial component. I'm pretty sure it had the hole to extract instead of the hole to charge stuff going on, but okay. It did, but you also had a gun that could shoot, that could, but you also had the gravity gun, so... Yeah, maybe it is better just to, hold, <laughs> to have the cutter out during this then. Okay, there we go. Probably best to not extract too many things, so we can still get the salvage, uh, <clears throat> the salvage milestones. Oh, be honest here. I'm not planning on staying. Just sort of came by to say hi and all that stuff. Okay, there's nothing oh, wrong with that. Just rest if you need it. I can't really have yeah. to. Honestly, my whole body feels like it's on 95% and then just like stuck there and it's like, yeah, I'm gonna fuck, yeah, my brain's just gonna fuck up for like a week. Okay, get get the bed or a couch with you then. Uh, I need a new bed. This one's fucking up my spine because, hey, guess what? My spine has both scoliosis on the base. And it's slightly bending to the left. Yay. <laughs> Memory foam bed. <sighs> I'm not even sure if I'm gonna fucking fix that. He says it right as I managed to <laughs> destroy the switch. 
<laughs> uh, timing. <laughs> Anyways, you guys have fun. I'm gonna go and pass out for an hour. Oh, See ya. Yeah, and be well. Yeah. Or hope yeah, you're really yeah. better than you go to sleep, Raz. Yeah. Get better, please. I'll try. Have a good yeah. day. See ya. Have a good day. <laughs> yeah, Rum doesn't seem to get any luck with stuff. Okay. Once more, just cutting all of these off. Okay. I should probably do this more like one side at a time instead of just spinning around the, the center of the thing. Would probably have me miss less pieces. Okay. Let's pull Again? you off. No. Oh, you as well. And we have some free bits floating around. Filter. Hey, look. That pipe would be perfect for the Amadillo. Check out the diagnostic program in your hab when you want to install it. Okay, do we have a list somewhere of where we can see? Okay, we circuit boards, iron coals, and wires. Okay. I'm guessing other stuff that we grab just goes into storage for when it would be needed. Okay. Yeah, let's try salvaging stuff uh, at the end with this when we start stripping out. In our sort of schedule, let's keep it to the end of the process. Yeah, that is like, sure, if you find something already loose, you can grab it, but some other things might be better to wait. Yeah, so we don't destroy too much you know, on purpose or accidentally for the milestones. Yeah. Because we need those links tokens for upgrades. Because we have, we've had enough for now, and I'm... I was stuck on something there. But we won't always have that. You? <laughs> Pardon? What? Given whatever it was. Yeah, the, the hamburger, probably. <laughs> oh, you burped. All right, I did not hear it. I just heard it was gonna go quiet and say, well, basically, sorry for something. Yeah, I do try to cover it as best as I can every time, of course. And I don't think there's a need to cut that piece. Just let it out. I recall. What's wrong with a burp? Mm -hmm. Okay. Last bits here, I think. That seemed to that seemed a bit more flammable than usual. The cutter, okay, the cutter is at 70, uh, 67 percent. The meme, yeah, the joke number has been passed <laughs> without the words, which is good. Hallelujah! Okay, squeeze out. Get that bubble helmet out, and the rest will follow, like a freaking space cat. Okay, and here we start. Just give him a shove to get them loose and send them on their way. If I ever find a Shemis Space Cat in Storbound, I'll be naming him probably in Helium. <laughs> Been a while since I played that game. Yeah. It, it, I, I return to it now and then, but it is fun in uh, doses. Mm. But the mods are both the thing that help it be fun. Mm. Yeah, mods typically are the, the thing that ensure some things, uh, yeah, life expectancy after launch. And hello in the chat there, Big Trucker. Welcome, big trucker! Yeah, truckers from uh, 
He trucker, yeah, truckers are friend of beanies. And yeah, welcome to uh, Art Space Shipbreaker. And there is a good chance that Twitch showed the, diff the, the wrong uh, title because, yeah, once again, I forgot to change it beforehand because I had to rush myself due to being well, a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dance with another plate of <laughs> nanocarbon again. And yeah, we've, we've popped this big ass Kinder Egg open. Now to just pluck out the insides. Let's see. Hmm. Technically speaking, I think we could prop in the future, we could probably leave these pa uh, pieces together. <laughs> and thanks for the pass, trucker. As long as the tethers can pull it in in one go. We don't want this to go in just yet. So let's just... <laughs> We're fighting the freaking tether. Okay. Mm, stay still, you. Okay, it's momentum will stop in a moment. There we go. Object accepted for processing. And just another light lost, but that's only, well, a light cost. Alright. Off you go. And you... there. You follow. Okay, not the best idea to cross the tethers. Yeah, but they're yeah, the first one is fast enough to not interfere with the other. Because yeah, if the tethers get no, well, if the beams get you know, crossed, or rather something crosses the beam, the st the tether will break. Oh dear. Oh wait, it seems that it did forget. Miss one cut here. Be careful. Yeah, because that's the freaking fuel tank behind it. Okay. All right, I will rephrase that. Oh. Be extremely careful. Okay, now this thing is loose. And send it off. It was a goosey. The mother goose. <laughs> okay. Salvage secured. Credits deposited. Let's see. What is this? Oh. Okay, it's a very small terminal. Okay. Still worth enough probably to just, just send off. Unlike the lights. Which are, well, as good as useless. And yet, and yet still I pluck the switches off every time, even though I don't... <laughs> I have no idea how much those are worth, actually. Nothing, apparently. We, we've said multiple times now that we check at the... at the ends to see what they might be worth. And this time I'm, I'm going to try and remember that fully now. <laughs> Come on. Also, we haven't checked. We also haven't checked how much these posters may or may not be worth. Okay. And let's see. A few more switches. Where's the other? Nope, the other's gone. <laughs> Not much of a loss. Oh, oh. We need you. For our own little ship. Okay. I'm kind of a bit surprised still that Weaver gave us that uh, little ship of his. 
Because my strongest suspicion is still that Weaver is the one that alerted uh, the administration to the fact that people are unionizing. If he even knows that people are unionizing. Come on. Uh, yeah, since he is basically completely stuck uh, with the company, he'd be the most likely... Oh, it's not a crane, it's a secondary cockpit on there. He'd be the most likely to, well, be... To have the most to win from, yeah, basically screwing everyone over. Since, well, he got a bad clone. And that means that he can't uh, work and he can't, just plain can't escape the company. So, yeah. If he thought that selling everyone out would maybe get him out. Okay, that was wrong. And that terminal just ceased to exist, apparently. What the heck did he go? I'm guessing another dimension from the looks of it. Okay. Um, it's, yeah, furnace mostly. So there you go. Okay. Then let's deal with the rest of this. Some, yeah, some furnace paneling. But with how close that has gotten to the fuel tank, I'm just going to toss all of it that way. I'm not going to cut that close to it when the fuel is still in the pipes. And speaking of, where is the fuel thing? Oh, it, it came out on its own. <laughs> That's useful for us. Okay, flush the system. Lights on, lights off. No fuel in them. Should be. And you seem useful. Piston, okay. Yeah, we're going to be scavenge hunting a bit for these little bits now, since we know they actually have a use. Material Keep deposit. going, you. A door destroyed, nothing much. No, oh, and it seems that I did accidentally cut this at some point. Oh well. There, there, be on your way. Nope, and that's a good reason to go back. Oh dear. Hmm. Give me a moment to check. Let's see. Nope, that is all. A bit of a thing. I've been around the truck recently this thing a few other times. Yeah. There's a little fuel. We made hey, more than enough news bits. The people, uh, we played Deep Rock with uh, some time and be me a mistake. Yeah. Okay. I still wonder uh, which one uh, it might be of them. <laughs> yep. That was unintentional. <laughs> okay. What, yep. what did you do? I accidentally... Careful there, the, the bounce laser can still cut stuff. Okay. Uh, I accidentally tethered the, the fuel line to the nacelle. But, yeah, oh dear. Yep. There's, this thing does have a use here, because we can save, well, mostly safely. Remove that. Okay. It does destroy it. But it's safer than ac accidentally using the cutter on too much. Okay. And there's also a bit here that should be. Let's see. Let's see. Fuel pipe there. That piece should also be destroyed to have the best use of, well, the best chance of not blowing up the fuel tank. Even though you'd think when something gets superheated like that next to it, it should explode all the same. 
But luckily um, it does not. Come here down. Take a look at your uh, progress bar. Mm. Yeah, I'm um, about a quarter of the way to uh, the, ne the next milestone. I mean, look at the red part. Yeah. <laughs> Quite a bit. But that's because we yeah. have been blocking wiring from consoles. Actually, let, let's just use this, because then there's no chance of us accidentally uh, reflecting the laser onto the fuel tank. Because if you do hold it too long, it'll st the laser will still remain after the object is already destroyed. And yeah, like you saw earlier, it can reflect off of stuff. And we do not want that happening near the fuel tank. Okay. This one, and then that one. Careful not to cut beyond the cutting point, because for some reason the nacelle is fragile on this end. Even though with most other of these connection points, or mounts, that's the right word, they are as tough as nanocarbon. And and thus cannot be cut. Uh, <clears throat> cannot be cut. Distributors and dampeners in the S. Okay. We let's see. We don't have a use for those yet. So for now, let's just move this to the barge. Are you still stuck? Oh right. Of course you're still stuck. Because you're still held in place by the pipe. <laughs> Yeah, as dangerous as this mode of the cutter can be with accidentally hitting stuff behind it, there is no chance of it reflecting off of something. Okay. Uh, come on, big boy, get in. There we go. Last one. And then we can work on retracting... <clears throat> And extracting the fuel tank itself. Yeah, it looks like one of the other objects you sent down there has not landed yet. Okay, we'll check that in a second. Might as well immediately cut. Okay. No complaint this time. Okay. There we go. Now if you go. I think you can see the white box thing. Let's see. Now they don't all oh oh okay, yeah. I for a moment I, I was I was looking at this one, but no, that that one wasn't there yet. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. I would have completely missed that. You're most welcome, my friend. Okay. These cutting points. Oh, okay. Oh, that that might be a bit of an issue. That is a okay. That's a fuel clamp, not the actual fuel cell. So if we're careful, there we go. Yeah, they, these are going to make it a little bit more tricky, unless of course we cut away from the fuel cell. So we have no chance of it hitting it. Okay, but now we also have to cut out these. Oh dear. Get it moving. Yeah, with, with each uh, hazard grade that we go up, there's going to it's going to be more difficult to get these things out safely. Okay. So it's getting it. It basically it's the difficulty of uh, up the that board game operation going up every time. <laughs> 
but with you know, with bigger threats also comes bigger pay. And bigger pay means quicker progression through the rest of the game. Now then. That should be loose. It is loose. It is being held back by the pipes, though. But that's also <clears throat> loose and can be sent off. It looks like a <laughs> looks like we're throwing around a space octopus. Okay. Off you go. Down there. And Wait, you. Off the thing. Hmm? It, it was set. Ah. The place where it needs to go lights up, like making it a lot easier to not miss out. And yeah. Okay, processor, this as well. Let's see how much of you is connected. Hmm. Material deposited. All of it is connected, but the fuel cell is free now. So let's just get rid of that as quickly as possible. And get rid of our explosive hazards. Okay, where did that come from? Oh, that, that's the that's the other bit of paneling from the first half of the ship. Okay. No. This should only be a holding place. Actually, is this being held in place still? Or is it just... Okay, this entire section should be loose now, but I I think this thing is just too heavy to move manually. So just pull this out, move it about, and then it can do the hokey pokey in the furnace. <laughs> Raw material process. I don't think I know how you don't the hooky pokey. Yeah, me neither, actually. <laughs> okay, yeah. That is the middle of the ship done. So only the last half, or the last third remains. So let's start, as usual, with the outside. It's the first time that we've seen an arrow bridge like this. Wait, a what? An arrow bridge. It's bas basically uh, you you see in sci science fiction movies when a, a ship docks with something that something extends to attach to an airlock. That's this basically. Salvage secured. Oh. Okay. I thought you said error bridge. <laughs> well, if someone makes an error with the error bridge, uh, yeah, you're going to have a lot more problems to deal with. Oh, God. Okay. Anything useful floating here except for bolts? Well, potato chips. Again, I don't think we want any potato chips that are possibly centuries, if not millennia old. Actually, this isn't that far in the future, I think. Uh, 25th century, I believe it's, it was about. So yeah, they wouldn't, at, at least, thruster damage. They wouldn't be millennia old, but they'd still be likely very, very old. Long past the uh, expiration date. Unless uh, them being in a vacuum helps them be preserved? Mm. Likely, yeah. Then. Hmm. Not actually sure how well stuff remains preserved in a vacuum. Mm. Long you. Okay. And I just realized that I forgot to set a timer for this stream. But oh well. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I, I just have the, a clock hanging over on the wall there anyways. Which is how I usually keep track of the time. 
And yeah, we didn't start late or anything with this, so it, yeah, we, we'd just be ending around the same time. Go. Yeah, those are going in. Just to check that I don't throw them at too shallow of an angle. Because then they'd be going into the atmosphere. Oh, the water yeah. must work 3,000. Let's see. Where are you still attached? Or more, how are you still attached? 30 ton, which... Yeah, it still connect. It still counts as connected to the rest of this. So let's get inside and start cutting away the cutting points. Okay. Actually, we don't even have act. Oh, here it is. Okay. And yeah, we pulled off the batteries. So there's no. Actually, it's pressurized. It seems. Okay, that is a bit bad. Because that might, means that stuff might start flying around inside the reactor chamber. Okay. Yeah, I, sh I should have done a full check of this ship to see if everything was connected or not. And yep, yeah, we I can't very much plug in either. the things room. Yeah? Uh, I just did something in that room. There's a lot of soda in there. Yeah, and even some in the cockpit uh, hiding space. Let's see. Is there any place here we can cut, or is it just completely connected to the airlock? Hmm. Yeah, and I'm used to find a few buttons here and there, but. How many buttons are there? <laughs> Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and about three in there, so ten bottles. Yeah, that's a record. Usually it's maybe like one or three. So, were they having a party? Possibly. Okay. Now, where is that battery? Salvage There's that battery. Okay, I'm going to have to decompress this place. And hopefully it doesn't shut off the reactor. Wait, what? Um, I'm pretty sure that... Okay, I'm... Oh, I'm misremembering, I think. Green <laughs> next to it should mean that it's uh, com that it's compressed. So, yeah, it's safe. It is decompressed. It's just that I forgot to open the freaking door. Oh, well. By Odin's beard, Indian. Yeah, we were about to have a panic attack for nothing. Yep. Uh, yeah, like I said, it is, this little game of operation is going to get more difficult and complex with every hazard grade that we go up. Now, let's see. I don't think these are actually still connected to anything. Yep, they are not, so there's no need to cut those. There is need to cut these. Yeah, simple one reactor, one thruster. Nothing special. Yeah, one cut like that is not going to completely destroy it. Okay. And once the airlock is free, the cockpit and the arrow bridge should be uh, free to be removed. Okay. <clears throat> Pardon? What is blocking me? Hmm. 
What was it? It felt like it was bumping against something here. Apparently not. See? And... Okay, for a second there, I thought I accidentally hit the edge of the, the airlock. And yeah, an airlock with a oh, hole in it is a bit useless. Careful of the reactor. That's systems. Electrical fuel. No, that's because there's the lights. Now, I haven't shown this one, bef this uh, of the vision modes before. And yeah, it just says up top what each thing is. We have electrical, we have fuel, we have coolant, we have radiation, and reactant. Reactant is new. And yeah, objects to keep a better check of where everything is. And anything of value by it might be floating around. Okay. Let's see. Any other points here? Yeah, this airlock, of course. Okay, that's a bit too small for me to squeeze in. And let's not cut all of that. There, there. Okay, some, something I forgot to say so far, I'm, I'm, with the, uh, let's see, with the Ship Doctor widget, there are a lot of steps to go through, and, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go through all of those with these strings yet, uh, once we hit the end of uh, this chapter of the story, we'll call it, um, we'll move on to something else. Most likely, Orcs must die three, because by now, they should have that fully functional, finally. And, yeah. So when the next story, big story upgrade uh, update for this game comes out, we'll return to it eventually. But we're not going to go through all of the grind of going through all of those freaking steps. Yeah, that would just be annoying. Unless there's a reason to do it, like... If they add something more in the beginning and such. Let's see. These, these should be loose now. Hmm. I don't want to cut the arrow bridge. Did I miss a cutting point? No, there, there's one down there, but that's the, the antenna that we threw down. Hmm. Maybe we just Maybe need to peel this thing more. There might be even be some switch you need to pull. Come back here, you. You're not you're not valuable enough for the processor. Hmm. Yeah, forgiven. Let's see. Is this all just one giant ass ring? Well, it's actually not a ring. It's a uh, octagon. Mm, yeah, that is more accurate. Oh well, let's let's see what we can okay. if we can tug this part out. Maybe we can pull it off double. like a glove. Yeah, I was trying to be hopefully smart assy, but yeah, I used to realize what the heck is it. <laughs> okay, if we remove the cap, it should be easier to pull the rest out. Okay, for a moment I thought the game froze for a second, like some sort of autosave. Hmm. But no, everything just stood perfectly still for a second. Are you going to come off? Or actually, no, the airlocks is, are holding it in place. Hmm. And how do I get it out?
I could, I could probably start cutting into the walls and get the airlocks out that way. Hmm. Yeah, this is a case that I haven't actually encountered before, I think. There's no cut points left here. There are only the cut points of the, well, the extra stuff and the at the end there left. So yeah, we're going to have to start cutting into this thing to free this last bit. And we might as well cut along the lines then. Get all of that. Actually, this will only re remove the second half of this, but that'll give us more room to maneuver around after we, after we pull that out. Yeah, be right back. Just gonna grab more drink. Okay. So, try not to die. No promises. And, oh, we've already been at this ship for 46 minutes. That's also a way to keep somewhat of a track of the time with this. And that's now completely loose. Okay, coming out. And back. That's the grapple damaged. We're reaching another point of damage, uh, another damage threshold. Let's see. Can we? Yes, we can. Let's hope that doesn't hit anything important on the way up. And cancel that. You go that way. Okay. Should be safe to maneuver around fully now. And well, it's perfectly lined up for the, <laughs> the furnace here. And that. Let's go. Okay. And there goes <laughs> all of the drinks. Do not head towards the reactor, you. I'd rather want you to hit the other half. Okay. Just needed to have some momentum in that direction. Not for it to fully head there. Fabric's not really worth it to individually remove, but it will. Okay. Tables, though, are for some reason very pricey. So those we do want to specifically throw in. Okay, and the rest of the... Oh, one more chair. And the rest is for the furnace. Just sure. Just check. Yeah, nothing else in this thing. So grab you by the metaphorical ear and off you go. Okay, bump the paneling a bit. But yeah, that's what we have tethers for. I was like, I wonder what the heck are these light power things? Oop, might as well up top up on fuel. You mean these things? Like on the uh, tank catchers yeah. or something? Yeah, they're, yeah it's, does it have a name? Say a name on them? It doesn't say a name, but they're they're meant for pulling stuff around. They're locked in place somehow. Okay. So, yeah, they're yeah. for. If, if I need to pull a ship forward, I could do that by putting some tethers on the nose, then connect the other half to that. Hmm. Okay. Okay, then I get it. Well, they, they seem to be a little bit random. For, mo for sometimes I wonder, ship wait, wait, mines? Oh. There is, no, it would not make sense to have ship mines this close to a ship. They aren't going to accidentally, you know, well, they aren't going to try and blow up uh, their possible profit with these things. Okay. All themselves. Probably better to cut this thing free from the other side. Okay. 
vintage chip skin of the red eyes. Careful, whatever that other me. And that was more of the frame. You get out of my way, please. Didn't mean to bounce it off the panel. Get out of the way before the other half smacks me. <laughs> okay, I was mostly saying that in jest, but it actually would have hit me if I'd stayed a bit longer there. Careful <laughs> okay. what you wish for! What is that piece of paneling? Okay. Airlock might not actually be worth all of this work, but yeah, we're close to the we're close to losing the last of the milestones, so I'm just going to play this. Yes, surgically as possible. Need to remember to check the price or the value of those things and the posters. Okay. Now, are you finally free? Yes, you are. Just need to remove this little bit that is in your way. And that bit that is still stuck somewhere. Okay. And we've got another case of quantum doors. Uh, you think they'd have uh, modeled those things as two separate entities by now, but I'm guessing people are having a bit too much fun with those. Okay. Yeah, and it might be a bit harder to do. Come on. You're still being held back by that bit. That is loose. Oh, come on. Okay, that's a very stubborn piece of paneling. Come on. Moving the entire thing around, trying to get the freaking airlock out. And that's our fireworks going off in the background. I can't hear it. I can see it trigger the audio on the OBS. Might need to... I might need to cut a bigger hole for this thing, or I've managed to wedge it in. Come on. Will you speak to the wedge it out the other way? No, that's... This is... Car this is nanocarbon, and we can't cut that. Actually, there is one way to probably make this a lot easier. And that's just to cut this entire thing in half. That probably would have been a lot easier to do from the start. Because then I can just pull the two halves off of each other. And where the heck did we end up? Okay, we floated quite a bit. Uh, you head that way, please. I do not want every all of that to loot go get lost in the furnace. Let's not get the edge of the Okay. All of no, not the not that. No, we don't want to pull you free from each other. Perfectly uh, oh, together. Come on, get back. I think it's starting. To, I think the furnace is pulling on it a bit, or it's its momentum. Okay. Put a few good gashes in this thing. Where is it still being held together? Probably the framework. Yep, it's the framework. 
Okay. That's good. Okay, panels are gone. Our tethers are gone. There, is that finally everything? No, that's just one big chunk loose. Probably a good idea to send that off as well. And yeah, then we have complete access to the reactor. Okay. But the, what, what was that that needs to go to the box or whatever? Mm -hmm. The reactor. What's it over there? That's the end of that's the back end of the ship still where it was at since the start of this. Okay. Nobody would set it down already. Nope. And there we go. All it took was to cut an entire compartment in half. Credits deposited. Uh, probably not really worth the time, but yeah. Okay. You that way, please. And okay, that's not heading towards the reactor. Okay. Now the other one. All of the all of this I'm basically doing just to see how much a piece for the furnace is worth. Are you you're still not going to let go? Hmm. Okay, how do I need it? Now, now there's also one other way to check out how valuable it is by destroying it. Off you go. You just keep going and yeah. Extract that from a safe distance and off you go. Now we have a lot of little bits of debris floating around and a cassette tape. Okay, <laughs> someone's mixed tape. Is this all yeah. Uh, wouldn't be surprised. No, we have only this. Do you know there's a bad cold stone? I didn't actually. Alright, come door. on, keep moving. There is the bad stone lord got to be part of the star of a guardian of the galaxy game to make some uh, music there. Okay. So... I haven't actually looked up much on that yet. Yeah. I've only got reason recent learned about it from uh, another friend of mine. And they they said quite decently. Okay, I'll I'll need to check up on any reviews for that game yet, but because yeah, from the, the the trailer was more focused on showing off the graphics than any actual gameplay. So that has me a bit suspicious. So far, from what I heard, it's very fun. It's also apparently short, but he may have not done all the side missions. I'm not asking if the, uh, how this story was, but apparently it seems to be many love the game a lot. Okay. I'll probably still get it once it, once it goes on sale, because I'm a cheap ass. Okay, there we go with Howard. <laughs> okay, yeah, we want to save the Arrow Bridge. 140k, and yeah, that pushed us past... Yeah, we lost the third goal with that. Oh well. But that begs the question, how the heck are we supposed to get that thing out? Good question! Hmm. Okay. You're not seeing much of anything left. There's a little green thing there. Actually, it's some wiring. Get here. We want you. Nice find, Rook. Can't wait to see you get that old beauty up and running. 
Okay, good. Oh. good. No, that wasn't actually what is over there. Come on. Oh, it's a. Uh, it's one of the power cells that we pull off. There we go. That's quite a bit on that. Now we're done. Okay, I'll need. I'll need to do that more often to look back and check. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Still quite a bit destroyed. Now let's see. How much were those posters and switches? Let's see. Seats, wall terminal, panel, door, amplifier, airlock, light, personal terminal, door console. Oh, okay, those are those are worth a lot if those. Wait, How many four? have been destroyed? Not many, I think. Let's see. You burn off a few. And posters are twenty-one uh, th or two point one thousand each. Fuel pipe. Okay, okay, those are pretty pricey. A flush switch of only six point forty-one dollars. And some some bottles. Okay, didn't think you could actually get points for those because you can't grab them. Tables, fifteen thousand each. About food food packs as well. Okay. They want the potato chips? Apparently. New certification level achieved. License now we're level updated. 9. Let's see. Do we get anything new from that? And halfway to the next one already? Nice. Let's see. Hello, ship breaker. Please enjoy this inspirational message. The last 10% of a job takes as much energy as the first 90%. So think of what it takes to hit 110% and aim for that. Fuck off, Lynx. Let's see. I found one thing here. Let's see. What do we have here? We have one of 13 things on Earth. Now we have two. Oh, Solar History Volume 2. Let's see. Excerpt Vacuum Hangovers. I've only been vacked once. We were suiting we were suiting up to line up a rock over Chrissy or Chrissy. Real pretty rock. And I was so thirsty to get it done and it didn't lock in my mag gloves properly. When the door opened, I, I could feel the vac creeping out of my arm. It's like you've got a rash. Your skin gets puffy and tight. And then it was on my chest and in my helmet and it felt like it was going to break out of my suit. The last thing I remember was the moisture on my oil, uh, on my eyes boiling as the pressure changed. My med vital spiked and they closed the door, but I'll be goddamned if I don't and I lock my gloves in every time now. Captain Liam Weir. Yeah, I'm just pretty sure I've said this at least once whilst we've streamed this game, but uh, in a vacuum, water boils. So, yeah, you wouldn't freeze out in space, you'd be cooked from the inside out. Yeah, before you freeze. And breaks in Sagan. When most uh, of the builders go in, go in on their breaks, they send messages, eat, drink, whatever, but I don't. I refill my O2, lash in and head out uh, for the floodlights. If you sit there in the black with your EV visor off, uh, up, looking away from the sun, the Milky Way comes out like water creeping uh, uh, out of a flask in zero G. If you sit there long enough, you can see the edges of nebulas from a million years uh, ago, sharing their hopes of the stars they want to make. The ship rides Jeremy Freddy. It's, that actually sounds very pretty. Yeah, and oh gosh, I just remembered. I seen a video describing what happens to a human body in space. Yeah, it's not what they show in Titan AE. Or in or in Guardian of the Galaxy, it basically, well, there is a freezing, but it's just a healing sense. The boiling comes first. Yeah. And uh, if you, is it a nasty thing? You won't recognize a human body the, in space. Yeah. You you will basically see a meat blob that looks like a misformed skin fleshy meatball or something. 
Okay, so that's where uh, Warhammer gets the ideas for the Chaos Beasts from. Let's see. Do you are you talking about the Nurglings? <laughs> Maybe. Let's see. April showers. Back on the blue, meteor showers were lovely natural fireworks. Green, white, and blue streaks across the sky. But in Sagan, on Luna, meteor showers are like a tsunami or a wildfire. There's no atmosphere, and so those big, beautiful rocks don't burn up. They come in like a fury, pounding the yards, tearing apart ships in production. There's fireworks, just not in the sky. Shipwright Elliot Hanginger. Yeah. You think they put up some sort of shield over the ship production? So the heck? <clears throat> the drops. When they first started industry in space, the idea of moving goods back down uh, to the Earth was so challenging. Rockets, then haulers. Nowadays we have heat shields that start at 100 meters across and we load that shield up. Lash it down and put it on a re-entry vector that's going to give it a splashdown instead of a crater. Pax delivers. Let the recovery team sort it out. <laughs> Commander Chris Chevalier. Yeah, all you'd really need mm -hmm. is, is for the materials inside to, uh, yeah, survive the re-entry heat and the impact, and beyond that, <laughs> no uh, real need for comforts. Bloody heck! An old beast. Are oh, you talking about the chaos spawn? Yeah, it could be anything with all of the. Hmm. Yeah, the war beast from Warhammer to all of the chaos stuff in Dungeons and Dragons and whatnot. Yeah. Let's see, the Railgate project. Uh, the 22 three, uh, more of this bullshit. After solidifying Lynx as a corporate powerhouse and boon of innovation, Ugh. Exeter Paulson uh, continued his quest for fast, easy mass transit between the stars. After years of searching, he discovered engineer and astrophysicist Dr. Doris Singh. Uh, who was then working as a professor and researcher in the physics uh, researcher in the physics department of International Arctic University? Dr. Singh had uh, published a paper a few years prior, which described a model for rapid transit through a series of gates. Criticized as too grand and impractical, her proposal had languished. Exeter hired Dr. Singh and her research team, giving them essentially unlimited resources. Under his wisdom and guidance, Dr. Singh's team completed the first railgate prototype connecting Earth and Mars in 2248. Human trials on the railgate began in 2252, showing early signs of success. However, only a year later, disaster struck. Due to human error and negligence on the part of its chief supervisor, the Phobos-based section of the gate prototype experienced a catastrophic collapse. The resultant blast affected dozens of colonies uh, on and around the moon, with a fatal, uh, with a final death toll of around 15,000 colonists and Lynx employees. The fact that you need to separate those tells me that one or the other is probably more valued than the other. Just say 15,000 uh, victims or so. Yeah, that, that always annoys me when victim counts are s uh, split into different groups. While a challenging event, Exeter Paul Nelson understood that real progress sometimes comes at uh, the cost of human sacrifice. Uh, when you're killing people, it's not them. Uh, that's not a sacrifice. That's yeah, people getting killed. And that progress shouldn't be stopped because of the criminal failings of a single individual. Pushing through the so-called Phobos incident, he helped Dr. Singh and her team rebuild the Mars Gate and continue human trials. Exeter had an unwavering commitment to progress and pursuit of his vision, retiring in 2255. His legacy was passed on to his daughter Demeter uh, Paulson. With her leadership in 2267, the Earth and Mars Gates were opened and the first round trip from Earth to Mars was completed. Exeter Paulson, father of the, modern solar civilization, of, of the modern solar civilization, had died five years prior, never getting the opportunity to see, to see the first travelers using his gates. I uh, do got to question one bit, though. If they had such a possibility of blowing up, why test them that close to colonies? Just move them further back to somewhere less, uh, less shrapnel-sensitive. Uh, Take yeah, and make sure that, uh, that everything is done proper. Yeah. 
Take a moment. Do you enjoy your life today? Do you see hope on Mars or on Jupiter? Do you want to forget about the burning and aridification of Earth and focus on the future? Thank Exeter Paulson for his vision and for your chance at a happy life. And then the Demeter Paulson era next up. Okay, it does sound like this guy really did put up a founding stone of the current civilization. Mm. But you should still be, yeah, skeptical of what may be true and not. Yeah, no, I can understand them still. I can see, I can idea a bit why they still continue experimenting to make sure it works. Because, well, the first one did fail due to a human error that it was someone may have messed up. Yeah, that's that's why fail safes, in my idea, should always be in triple. Because yeah. if some point fails, it should not lead to the complete destruction of everything. Yeah. So yeah, if, if it, yeah, yeah. When you put it that way, yeah, then yeah, that's a lot of people's fault. Let's see, durability drain. That is, that sounds useful. Ooh. Let's see. It'll may mean that stuff breaks less, uh, <clears throat> less fast. Let's see, not really our need for these. Range is range upgrades are a bit of a double-edged sword, since, well, it could mean that you might accidentally cut something far behind what you're trying to cut. If you're being a bit reckless with it. Rusters. Speed we don't really have a need for, because we can move around. Actually, does that work? Is that for... Okay, I need that to get the brakes. And yeah, we're... We're already getting a bit short on points to get these upgrades. Hmm. We still have some bit to go before we can unlock these. Two more. Hmm. For now... We use the cutter the most, so I think we should up, the, up its uh, reliability. Okay. Oh, it's then... Actually... Oh, it's the Void again. Hello. Do <laughs> Hello, Darkness, my old friend. Hello, Hellion. Okay. Let's see. We have a science. No, no that's another heavy cargo. On the few macros. Odin... Some number? Nine. The salt and mercury? Another Odin? Let's see, that is number 14. Because the the I, the I is a 1, the X is a 10, and if the number is before a higher version of it, then it's a detraction. So yeah, this, is, this would be Odin 10, but because it's in front, it's Odin 9. Okay. Yeah, shall we do one of the Odins then? Hmm... They are less valuable, but yeah, I'm I'm getting a bit tired of the uh, javelins for the moment. It has been a bit since we've done a mackerel. Yeah, might be a good idea then. I really like the name, the Salty Mercury. Hmm. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it to you still, which to take. Eh, one of the Odin's should be fine, since we probably want something a bit easier. Let's see, light cargo then. I think the heavy cargoes are typically carrying around the more useful or the more valuable stuff. Uh, yep. Yeah. Actually. Oh, so oh. oh no, then, uh, for a moment I thought this was the bigger version, but no, it's the same old little tiny fish that, as before. Probably good for me. Spend over an hour, an hour and 20 minutes or something on the first one. Yeah. Okay, rid of that. These nacelles are held on the inside. And yeah, green is with the air in it. And yeah, the danger just as a <clears throat> as a secondary layer to confirm that there is an atmosphere on the other side of a panel. Okay. Nothing much on the outside to remove. So we just head straight in. 
And we immediately start plucking up the little bits that we can use, like this rod. Uh, circuit boards. Yep, we need you. Uh, a bolt. That we have no use for. Okay. Okay, no atmosphere on the other side, so we can just pull the door out. And... Okay, that is a bit bad news. That means that the reactor is in the sides of the ship. Again, we are getting... Oh, I... I kind of forgot for a second there that there's... <laughs> we didn't pressurize the rest of the ship, but I guess this side is depressurized now. And luckily, nothing hit the freaking fuel tank right in front of us. I bow the spores, Helion! And the reactor is over here, because you can see the, the clamp that it's inside of. Does mean it will have to cut in there, most likely, unless we manage to you know, wrangle this thing off of the wall. And hello there. Thank you. Bit of wiring, another bunny for the collection. That's like number five. Another circuit board, ion coil. I thought those things were a bit more too detailed to just be random junk. Oh, oh. Okay, so we can grab these ice... Oh, oh, we've... How the hell did... How the hell did that happen? Oh, from the depressurization, of course, but... Oh, I see. The, the air rushed out from the side compartment through the open door into the main area and out the airlock. Okay, that that's a bit of an impressive little uh, calculation. Luckily, it wasn't enough to throw the entire thing into the freaking processor. And also, what the heck do you do to the back of ships? To the what? The ships. Bag of ships. Potato ships. Uh, they're roasted chips now, in the furnace. It, did, did you seriously break them when you picked them up? Yeah, uh, they didn't. Well, I... They might have broken from getting shoved, but not when I picked them up. <laughs> Pardon? Forgiven? Okay, that's the thruster free and the back ends. Okay, let's flush you so there's no fuel in the pipes anymore or in the cell. There we go. Now that is safe to be removed. It automatically lets go of the Oh, oh, no, it's not that, it is. For a moment, are you free? No, you are not free, you are... Okay, it's the entire back end that's moving a bit, like... <laughs> it's moving a bit lighter than usual. Okay, I'm so loose. No cabling to worry about for once. Okay. You will shove outwards. And down you go. It is going to bump a bit, but not enough to move anything. Boom. Salvage secured. Account credit applied. Okay. Yeah, the, the javelins are useful, or are, are worth a lot, but it gets a bit annoying to deal with a ship like that from time to time. Okay, yeah, careful not to hit the freaking fuel. It's, it's not, not, that's not to say that I dislike them, because for the most of, mo most of the time we did, we're hanging outside of it. Which is typically a bit more safer than uh, having to go inside of it in the ship. 
Because if something is moving around then, and, well, you can actually notice when you're outside. When you're in, uh, you wouldn't notice if you were heading towards the processor before, uh, until it was too late. And yeah, I don't think a, a, I don't think a spare is worth a lot in the furnace. Object accepted for processing. Credits deposited. I go hatch. Come on, stop moving. And off. That should land. Okay. The rest of these panels should come free as well. Yep. Off you go. Come on, let go. Give it a good shove. Let's pull you out before anything random happens and it explodes. Okay, and dunk. Nope, one we missed. Or rather more skipped because otherwise it would have been likely that it, we've blown ourselves up. Hmm. Maybe one of these times we do try to go for a complete 100% salvage, or at least as much as possible, like 99%. that we do pull off the, the, the worthless little lamps out of everything. Mm -hmm. Raw material Credits deposited. Okay. Actually, do we still have power? Okay, nope. That would just remove... Yeah, the wiring and make it useless. There. Salvage secured. Hmm. Credits deposited. And hmm. okay, let's work here for a bit. And I'm not sure if we've seen these heavy crates yet. Hard, hard crates. And of course, since they're, well, tougher, they're worth more than the soft crates, or at least they should be. Oh, they're, 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 they're new to me. Listen this game. Let's see uh, if we can uh, nudge the sides of the ship. Or at least get the cockpit to let go of, so we can get into the sides without having to cut into walls. And that is typically done by just tethering one of the floor panels. And yep, there we go. It peeled off. Okay. Hello, thank you. Okay. And that floats for a bit. And there we have our reactor. And our energy source. Hmm. So can we interact with this thing? We can pull something out of it. Fuses. We have no need for fuses. At the moment. Oh, another thing that we can grab. And every one of these loose ones that we find... Yeah, they're just free, so going to grab those anyways. Okay. Now if you pull this off, it'll turn off all of the electricity. So let's first flush out the fuel. Just in case that somehow gets disabled. I don't think it is, but better to be safe than uh, on fire. <laughs> Okay, off you go. Bye-bye. 
And you as well. And then this one we remove with a little bit. We can't remove. And there. And there. And this one gets removed with a bit more finesse. And those two stopped on their way there. Okay, don't hit the reactor. There we go. Okay. There. And done. What are you getting with? Oh, a bit of the frame. Careful little cuts. I wasn't aiming for that. F little cut and completely misses. And makes a giant cut. There we go. If you see young people, remember this. Okay, send the ass end off. Uh, the thruster has become loose on its own. Or actually, the, the thruster isn't actually connected to the back. It's only connected to that part. Uh, fuel low, okay. Instantly shows the words. Let's t tell the people, remember this. And the first thing you see they write off is... Yeah. Moving their, their ass away or something. There. And you go there. And yeah, that's this <laughs> this thing stripped in almost 15 minutes. Salvage secured. Credit to the object. Watch out for those. Fuel oxygen that we don't have an actual use for. Since well we turned that off because <laughs> we have enough reasons to go running back and forth between the hab or not. Oh, I put most those things that go boom if you hit them. Yeah, also. Oh. Yeah. Oxygen, fuel, we don't need to refuel that now because yeah, we just grabbed some old fuel from the ship itself. Send that off. Tether supplies running low. Wait, I get a bonus there. Yeah, we already good have that one, I think. He's just a good boy. What the heck was that? I hope I imagine that. Uh, what then? Oh, that's not a bat! <laughs> I don't think Batman is uh, around at this time anymore. Yeah, what's not Batman? I thought there's something. Oh, that's what. <laughs> a bit of, a bit of shrapnel from something. <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't move the boat of sort of so you flap, but just it flopping around. Okay. Yeah, I got confused by scrap model. Oh, that goes. I uh, haven't cut those parts free yet. I can remove this one now. Even if it's a bit grumpy. Okay, get rid of the collector fight stuff. What is it? No, that, that's the cockpit. <laughs> Actually, let's flip you around if possible. No, I don't want to be flipped around. There. Why would you flip me around? Okay, now we can toss all these little annoying bits off. Or we just pull our way, <laughs> or we just Jenga out the lowest parts and shove the rest off. <laughs> okay. There we go. These, oh, these are worth a lot less money than the javelins, but we also get through them a lot faster. Extremely 
the, the screen stream a lot faster. Yeah. I'm thinking we should probably swap back to the mackerels. Because, yeah, we just get through them so fast. Uh, actually, okay, there's nothing left on that. <laughs> just before I throw down some of the cargo. Probably should have removed you first before I you know, pull out the fuse box. We can get to these without uh, <laughs> without the crates in the way. Can we actually throw these somewhere? We have zero credits, so they yeah they hold no value other than well saving us money on the that specific resource. <laughs> Oh, hello. How did we miss you? Nom. Not the lights. Let's just throw it down as well. Salvage secured. Credit You gotta wonder what they have in those crates. Could, could be just about anything, really. Yeah, possibly. With the more valuable stuff most likely in the hard crates. Okay. Valuable object process. Hey, uh, shut about, up about the stupid lights. Okay, if you're that... Screw you then, freaking light bulb. Do I wonder? But why do they still have cargo in them? Like, did something happen to the ship? And most of these are derelicts, I believe. So yeah, something should have happened with them. Most likely the people on board dying for some reason or just selling the thing wholesale just to get out of with, with it or something. Let's see it. Hmm. They'll probably get destroy a door or two, but those are worth even less than the freaking light bulbs. I'm pretty sure they're worth more. I'm pretty sure they're worth uh, about 900 credits, and I should have I should have made those cuts from the front. So now I have to cut over here as well. Let's see. Yeah, a door is 600 credits. Oh. Careful, there's it's already some opening the there. But it's like putting out tea or something. I bring up what? Thief. Or rather like, uh, you know, the, the, the dentures, I think it's called. Okay. You're still... It's still connected by a little ledge here. Okay, let go. And there. Okay. Now, we can pluck the rest of this, most likely four parts. So, let's first remove the bits that don't have anything we need in them. Then we can just let the... the valuable stuff hover in the air here. Then we throw the cockpit into the processor. And what I, if that hits the third mark, we, uh, yeah, we just, <clears throat> we just pill for whatever's left. All right. Okay. Just in case we get as much out of this as possible. Go. I, I keep moving back with that, and I don't actually need to. I can just reel it in. Okay. 
Only a little bit more. Yeah, the, these... We can pluck these things. There we go. Switch to this so we don't accidentally launch it into the rest. Hold still. Come on. Oriented for a bit. Wait, wait. I think you threw that wrong. Now, when when we pluck out the parts, it becomes uh, it becomes yeah, slag for the salvage, like scrap. See? There we go. And yeah, the rest of this is more than enough to get us into the third milestone. We probably could have. Plucked a few more things. Oh, oh, oh those are works a lot. Yeah. There. Nothing left. Yeah, just a few lights. Yeah, that's um, be enough to give you. Uh, well, defer the mine stone. Yeah. There, I think the rest of this entire thing will be enough for that. Hopefully. Yeah, just lights. No, probably best if I do that from over here where I have a sight of the entire place. And the crushes. Mm. Boom. Only little bits left, it looks like. Yeah. Credit account. And there we go. In the third of a time. <laughs> Let's see. Airlock console destroyed. Hmm, okay. Still a good two and uh, two point six million. Uh, I didn't check if that got us to the next level. Probably not. But it would have alerted us if we had. Good morning, shipbreaker. Listen up, folks. Let me introduce you to Hal Rhodes. Now, he's no a... need for introductions, Weaver. I know who you all are. Let's just get right into it. I know you don't love a mental manager like me coming in, making life hard. Yeah, I get it. See, I'm from people like you. Used to work the Lynx yards around Saris. Not ship breaking, of course. Processing. Which, honestly, is just as tough. Yep. We know processing can be quite a ch This is real simple. I hit my goals and I'm out of your hair. But we gotta all pull the rope in the same direction, get it? Cooperation. Co-op-er-ation. You scratch my back, and we'll all be done here in no time. Capiche? Okay then, I'm taking the day to settle in and we'll see you all tomorrow bright and early. Okay. Okay, then. Um... This guy thinks he knows what backbreaking work is? <laughs> I'm telling ya, one week tops. Guy's gonna cooperate with the end of my grapple. <laughs> okay, now, remember, be on your best behavior. I'll see y'all in the yard. Well, he's immediately an asshole. Yeah, and up close and up, it doesn't look like you. Uh, yeah, I may be a bit it's uh, heavy, but I'm not uh, round like he seems to be. Yeah, Again, the, we the mostly only... have to deal with uh, headshots. Yeah, the only thing you have in common is the maybe the eyebrows and the beard, but that's it. Maybe similar grumpy face if you haven't slept properly. Again, Let's see. everyone looks extremely grumpy when they have to have proper sleep. Yeah. Apparently, so. someone thought I was going to go on a murder spree one time. Okay, we've got a good amount of points now. So let's invest in making sure that our stuff degrades less fast. We have. Oh, tell, is this. To subscribe to the salvage division R&D team for onboard software updates to enhance the strength of the grapple. 
On top of that, you'll be part of our premium mailing uh, list and get a weekly newsletter. I assume that's a joke, but... Yeah, that'll make it easier to move stuff around. And no, we no. don't have enough to get anything else. I also remember something. The... I don't know what I told you about the time I scared a friend when I was having extremely lack of sleep because of a damn truck. Oh, uh, years before that, I had a lot of incidents where I had only slept two hours. And I was uh, having a, a practice work at a place where they painted the shell legs and stuff as well, carved them. They noticed something was off with me. And they asked me how many hours I had to sleep for the year. I bet they saw I was very blank and mostly grown and grunted in reply, apparently. And when I replied to them only two hours, they sent me home. They, yeah, I'm pretty sure people typically need at the very minimum four or so. Yeah, six is recommended to the myth is that eight is required, but it's truthfully, it's actually six. Yeah, it Do does differ. Hours? It does differ a bit with age and such. That as well, and what do people do for work? But yeah, it was probably good for them to send me home for. Sure, I could probably could paint, uh, deal with some paint and such, but. Uh, the work I had that day was probably more machine related, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. It seems, the, it seems the other Odin has uh, been dethroned. So let's go for the Queen of Goat in our dart, because that's a heavy cargo. And I'm not sure if we've done a heavy cargo macro before. Uh, wait, what was her name? You can see the top, Queen of Godard. Okay. Morning, folks. Starting the shift clock. Now. Another day, another dent in a debt. Anyone want to race me? <laughs> you don't quit racing. You're going to get yourself killed for real someday. Uh, this is Hal. Just wondering how much time is spent chatting on average in a day here? It's just the crew checking in on one another from time to time. No harm in that. Well, as you know, the Lynx employee handbook says that avoiding chatter makes profits fatter. Talking to each other is good for productivity, actually. And Lou is going to get in a conflict with him. We'll look at the performance reports later and see, I guess. People are people. Doesn't mean we don't take our work seriously, Rhodes. Fine, right? No need to talk back. Hey, now, it's all good, right? Let's everybody just get back to work. Fine. I'm out of here. Good, good. You should all focus on your work. And you should focus less on being an asshole. Yeah. This is correct. Like, even, like, 10 seconds of chatter is too much. Yeah. I'm starting to hope we can ac we can accidentally quote unquote space him at some point. Yeah. Oh god. I had to sometimes shut the around working for a spine, but there was one person I avoid working with as much as possible due to well when he started shutter, he completely forget to work. This is a problem. Yeah. Yep. We reactor here. Might as well. Make that step one of getting this thing out. Another piston. Grab any freebie that we can. Great. All the cut points are gone here, right? Why are you refusing to move? Or wait, is it? Hmm. Let's move you away from uh, the danger zone. But yeah, heavy cargoes don't have interior walls, so they're a lot easier to maneuver around in. And they also have stuff like this floating around, like forklifts. Those should be pretty valuable, I think. 
And also random bits of ore. What the heck happened to your voice? Hmm? <clears throat> yeah, okay. yeah, I guess I got caused me to cough there. Okay, so that's why you sound a little bit different toned. Okay. Well, this but, but, but is why the side didn't come off. I would have thought he was trying to do an impression. <laughs> uh, no. Okay. Yeah, not there. Okay. Yeah, heavy heavy cargoes are nice, mostly because the in, the inner walls don't exist. The heck is is something on the outside holding it together or something? Let's see. Actually, what do you need to investigate? Oh, I think I know what's going on. It has a face. It probably has a shield up front. Or. Okay, yeah, the, the shielding is holding it together, I think. Okay. But if we pull these pieces off, they should just. It should just come loose. No, there's still the front grill. We probably didn't really need to pull those off because this is what's holding it together. So there we go. And then... Come on, step. There we go. They look so weird to have speed bumps on a spacecraft. Okay, and there and there. You'd think that giving a reactor a shove would be a bad idea, but apparently not as much. Just pray it doesn't um, go past the net. Yeah, it, it catches things with uh, 100 percent. Yeah, I also think of uh, sure it, the reactor may. Burn up in the atmosphere, but probably it's really deep blue before it gets burned up. Probably. And yeah, so that's maybe we, we don't want that in the atmosphere. What the hell is a fuel tank here? <laughs> Why the hell is that up front? Wait. I think that's what glitch through. No, it was it was stuck on the side here. Yeah, and I know you put a one move inside the ship. Because I think it was in that area. Uh, no, it was at the back in the middle. And there's a, a tank floating free. But no, they, they for some reason they thought it was a smart idea to put a fuel tank to the armor protecting the front of the freaking ship. <laughs> okay, that that is kind of stupid. Let's see. What are these bits doing here? Just bumps. Looks like it. Okay. Time to peel this thing as usual. That up. Oh, that's probably how we lost one of those switches. Forgot to remove it from the panel. Okay. And you go down. You moving. Here it is, the one that you were talking about. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Okay, just because there's something volatile in the area. Okay. We need to go back for some tethers. But we can first just get all of this loose. Uh, you go to the barge, but you are already loose. Actually, what is inside you? Stabilizers, ion coils, distributors, and dampeners. We do need ion coils. Okay, pluck this thing. What the heck? 
Oh, I, I thought I got that loose already. Apparently not. There we go. You, come back. And you go. There. And that's that direction. There we go. That's been fixed. Okay. work on the remaining cutting points. I'm not sure if we even need to remove these. Okay. okay, these are for the processor. So yes, we do want to cut these free. It's been a long while since I've done a, a heavy cargo. Wires, we're good on wiring, so this one can go. And that's the first goal. Yeah, I think we should just stick with uh, the mackerels for now. We, we've done a good amount of javelins in a row, unless something new of them appears, like a, <clears throat> like a science version. Uh, which there should be. We'll leave them be because these mackerels are just much easier to skin. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite a good idea. Okay. Do that way. Do that way. Okay. And we're already halfway there, so might as well go fill up. Salvage secured. Credit deposited. And we should probably also fill up on fuel before it starts complaining about that as well. Oh, though it does look like we're at the two hour mark about. Thank you for your uh, yep. Let's go a bit longer to finish this thing off. It shouldn't take too long. Uh, 10 minutes at the most, I'm thinking. Ooh. Almost. You get out of the way. Get out of the way, not further in the way. Okay. is furnace so it can be cut without too much consequence uh, tomorrow with something Sunday I do have one th thing planned for a test oh. to, uh, yeah I'm going to try out chroma keying so most of the background around here would be see-through to the game to see how that works. I did run a few tests with that with Fakir, and it does look mostly good. It's, it does use a free program without a subscription because you know, having to use a, having to get a, uh, a subscription for something just for one program, uh, yeah, that's a hard no. And even just a small program like that. Uh, Let him guess. Uh, the program program to make sure you don't get walk the mark on the face. Yeah, uh, that will be with the Nvidia uh, broadcast. It does it does have some flickering happening, though. Uh, yeah, with the size of this screen and how little it was, mostly at the top of my hair, and this side of the chair for some reason. With only that, it shouldn't be too uh, horrible to look at. It can't be any more horrible to look at than my mug. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's not even attached to something else. Okay, it is. go. Yeah, the, the tether was... The tether is connected to o open space. Oh. Uh, 
I thought you meant the middle part of the tender. Okay, let's plug this thing. And we, I think we should still be good. Yep. Didn't mean to do that. There we go. Oh, hello. Missed your entire existence this whole time. And no brother on the other side. Okay. You, that way, all of you get moving. No pew. Get moving, boys. And then those there. For some reason, they do want the bottles in the furnace. If I can get to freaking plants. There we go. Um, I've not actually tried daisy chaining in a bit, so let's see. That should pull that in, and this one should get pulled along. Uh, there we go. Yeah, it's it's a bit more rougher than <laughs> removing them separately, but okay. Now let's see asteroid shards. Uh, what? You are su you are surprisingly heavy. Fifteen hundred kilos. Get moving, you. That, that better be worth something. Right, that thing that, that broke that way. Did, did you see any holes from that? Hmm? A what? Astral holes on the ship. No, they, those were cargo. They were being oh. uh, moved for someone. Ooh. They are worth 24,000. Okay. Yeah. We're not going. We're we're going to have. Well, it's it's going into the, the furnace, and it's not attached or anything. So dealing with those should be easy enough. Hello. Careful not to move the mouse around too much, or you might accidentally smack something into something else. No. For the rest of this, it should just go in there. And the rest of you in there. And the thruster we can pull out like this. If there is something in it. Let's have a check. Ion coils. Hmm. I think we're probably already close to. Yeah, we'd probably lose the uh, the, the milestone, and we want those for the upgrades. Furnace. Chuck away some lost bits. Send. And actually, kill that. Because that's furnace stuff. There we go. Now we should just get this thing out of the door. And yeah, these forklifts are very heavy. 600 kilos on their own. Okay. Oh, hello, some circuit boards. And another coil. Oh. Updated drive. Let's see. Yep, yep, that was enough. We didn't need to destroy the thruster. Okay. Go. Actually, I probably should have done this a lot earlier. Just empty this thing out from the inside. Where it does move around quite a bit. From getting pulled around. <laughs> hey, come on. Hmm. Okay, well, maybe empty those things out earlier. Yeah, but then don't go around so much. Yeah, with the frame still attached. What? Yeah, with the frame still attached. That should yeah. provide enough leverage or enough mass. To keep it still. Yeah, it should. It should. Primary emphasis on should, of course, instead of will. Salvage secured. Account 
Because if you assume something will go wrong, it will go... If you assume something won't go wrong, it will go wrong. Yep. <laughs> Pardon? Yeah, Murphy's Law and all that. <laughs> Okay. And that should be the last. Only the glass left. And we'll cut that from the front. So we cut down the entire length of it instead of just one of its three sections. of this to the processor. Oh, I think I see one thing left. Yep. I'll take that. And there we go. Last check. Only lights. And a bottle. Okay. Then let's head back and end the stream. Nope. Come on, get back there. Okay, it's out of reach of the push, which, well, makes sense. It is pretty far away. Come on, get moving. And it's in the pool. Okay. <laughs> and, and out. Okay, still another two and a half million. Yeah, I, I think it is. It is more cost effective with time to pull apart macros instead of javelins. And level ten. Okay, only one away from getting the demo charges. You became a seal? <laughs> Not that kind of seal. Well, I, I'm I have already beat spawn for you. I'm guessing hail is going to pipe up. Because progress is tied to the level, Hello, mostly it seems. This is your morning wake up call. That's it? No, not even attempting? Yeah, attempting? Okay, hazard level 6. You are now authorized to work with salvage with the following hazards. Class 2 reactor. Now we're getting to the big ships. A far more powerful reactant source with greater potential for damage and a more complex extraction process. Uh, environmental control unit, ECU, controls the, temp the atmosphere and pressure level inside a ship, as well as provide coolant to the reactor. Coolant, coolant leaks cause all surrounding objects to become highly brittle and easily destroyed, because yet yeah, it freezes them solid. Uh, hand, refer to handbook messages available at your employee terminal for more details. Yeah. Another good two million done in a day. Good news, Cutter. You've earned clearance to the next hazard level. This means you'll be getting class two reactors now. Gnarly things. We'll start training when you're ready and I'll walk you through them. Oh, they're not so bad. You've seen one reactor, you've seen them all, I think. You have not. This no. Ain't really that simple. Yeah, I got a tip for you there, newbie. Don't blow it up. <laughs> Cutter, like I said, let me know when you're ready to start training. Don't take too long. Yeah, this asshat has not done a day of work, actual work in his life, I'm guessing. Uh, let, let's yeah, take said, a look here. I was thinking it's hard work, but then again. I wouldn't be surprised if he have the easy part of processing. Yeah. Okay. And well, processing is a lot more automated than having to surgically pull apart a ship. Let's see. Is this the new one, Port Olympus? Yes, we had links and Earth documents. It's number three of three. Okay, that's a bit of text. We'll do this and then we'll end it off. 
has a portrait of Martel. Or ha Howard Howie Martel, founder of Port Olympus. Okay. And he lived, he lived uh, to be 85 years old. Let's see. Martian sovereignty. With more and more corporations gaining a foothold on Mars, attracting people from Earth to start living a new life among the stars, uh, Mars quickly established itself as a separate entity from Earth. Especially after breathable atmosphere was achieved in 2150, life on the Red Planet became more and more comfortable. In particular, birth rates on Mars improved dramatically. From this point onward, Mars was no longer reliant on resources or workforce from Earth. With the population exploding and many new opportunities and social structures forming, a natural desire for independence came where it is not just among the citizenry, but from the powerful corporations so, as well. Of course, because they'll do anything to escape any sort of oversight or regulation. There was a broad movement to create a new Martian government for the sake of avoiding the mistakes of Terran history. Yeah, some wanted more regulation and protection for human workers, others wanted total freedom from those kinds of restrictions. In the end, lobbying and practical demand was the key to Port Olympus being granted sovereignty in 2174, becoming the first self-governed off-world settlement in human history. Not saying which one it ended up with, but yeah, people... People with the money typically have a lot easier actually only access to lobbying. So it probably became some sort of free state hellhole. Oh well. Yeah. Yep, three more messages. Oh, that's going to be the history bit. And this, okay, this is going to explain a bit about these things. So I should probably leave this for next time. Because these things are a lot more like, uh, yeah, like I keep... I keep making comparisons to uh, that board game operation. Class 2 reactors will need quite a bit more of that because, yeah, they have fuel running to them. They have coolant running to them. If something goes wrong with either system, boom. <laughs> yeah. So let's just give Bunny Character D another... Okay, no, not a squeak this time. Okay. Then no harm for Bunny Character. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's one more thing to check. Did it automatically progress to the second stage with this? Welcome or... to the ship, Doctor. Okay. Let's fix that ship up. Put those in. Ah, nice and work. If I had a heart, I'd be proud. My prognosis is your ship will be awesome in no time. I'm detecting okay. symptoms of acute awesomeness. <laughs> Might as well put those in. Successful transplant. Nice job. Okay. We need some fuses and dampeners for next. Okay. And again. Again, no hug from Bunny Character D, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, like I said, tomorrow with Something Sunday, we'll be trying out the chroma key background thing uh yeah there i there will probably be a bit of flickering but i hope it won't be too bad um yeah beyond that nothing else too much to warn about or talk about so yeah i, I w i'm pretty sure everyone was expecting the manager to be a jackass but yeah he he, <laughs> he could have at least given it two sentences before he made himself known as yeah, King Jackass. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, we'll just have to see how much of a pain in the ass he is going to become. Likely a big one. And I get the feeling that if we were playing on the higher difficulties, he'd probably be putting on extra time restrictions or something. Uh, or maybe not. Uh, well, again, uh, we'll just have to see where this goes. Yep. And I'm I'm assuming we'll get some sort of notification once we reach the end of the story with this at the moment, as far as it doesn't concern the uh, our little escape vessel here. Uh, yeah, other than that, uh, thank you everyone who has been watching now or later. Uh, thank you as uh, <clears throat> thank you Big Trucker for showing up, and thank you especially Drakir. Oh, you're most welcome, my friend. And yeah, like I said, something Sunday tomorrow where we try a few games. 
And beyond that, we'll be continuing on with this with the Dishonored DLCs next week. Yay! But as always, until then, have a nice day, and until then. Be safe, folks! <laughs>